So today's video is about getting that delicious remaster experience and to do that we're going to need to install mods on Dark Souls 1 for a PC obviously. So to do that let's just start by doing a completely clean install and let's uninstall Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. So uninstall it from Steam as you just saw there. But the thing is, is, when you've uninstalled it, there's a little bit more you need to do. You need to go in and delete some extra files that don't get removed when you uninstall it. So to do that, you can go to this, Properties, Local Files, Browse Local Files, or indeed you can go into My Computer, uh, C Drive, uh, Program Files, x86, blah, 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 blah. You can see what I'm doing here. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, I think, because I can't see the preview very well. But just go into the click what I'm clicking, and then you can see Prepare to Die. So you want to delete the whole thing like what I'm doing here and then that way we can get the clean install of the game and then we can just make sure that everything's going to run smoothly because we don't want to fuck anything up and then you know just delete your recycle bin whatever right so now we're on track and now we're just going to reinstall the game or and, and you know, don't need to reinstall it you can just install it for the first time this is just basically the same thing just make sure you've got a nice clean install going with the game. So as you can see, I've just sped up some parts, but now the game is installed. And before we go in any further, I just want to let's go in and see what the game looks like completely vanilla with no mods installed. So as you can see, uh, I mean, it just looks like console with admittedly a slightly better frame rate, but overall, you know, it looks like shit. But before we get into doing anything else, we just want to quickly make sure that your PC settings look like this. Make sure the anti-aliasing is off, the motion blur is up to you, Make sure the frequency is set to 60 hertz, and also make sure your resolution is in 32-bit if your system can run it, and not 16-bit. Because I accidentally had it in 16-bit for a while, and I was wondering why my game looked really weird. I've never seen a game switch between 32 and 16-bit before, so just make sure it's on 32-bit if you can run it. And obviously have your resolution set to whatever your monitor can output. So now we have the prep done, the first thing we've got to do is install DS Fix. Now I have the, all the links to all these mods in the description. So I've got the link to, these, to DS Fix, open that link and then just download the first option as you can see on screen. So once that's downloaded, we've got to you know, extract it. So I've made up two folders, I've got the downloads folder here which things go to normally and then I've made my own Dark Souls mod folder. Now you don't need to do this but I've done it just to keep things neat and tidy. So let's extract this folder into the Dark Souls mod folder like you can see. And from here, it is super easy to actually install DS Fix. So you've got the files there that we need to install. So now you just get up your local files for Dark Souls 1 again. So as you can see, you can just go to Properties, Browse Local Files, or as what I'm going to do here again, go to my computer, C Drive, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and there we go. So now you want to open up the data folder, and that's where your Dark Souls EXE is going to be. And then literally all you need to do is just click and drag these files from DS Fix. And what I'm going to do is copy and paste the files, that way I've got a backup of them. But copy and paste them into the data folder and then that is you. You've basically installed DS Fix. So there's a little bit of a caveat here. There's a text file, the one that I'm clicking here. And we need to edit this in order to set up our DS Fix essentially. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the, the, the graphics options and we're going to start with the resolution values. So basically, if you have a 1080p screen, just keep it the way it is. But if you have a really beefy machine, then you can essentially like downsample the entire game and you can put the internal resolution to like say 2K or 4K and then put the display resolution, the one below it where it's at 0, 0, you can put that to the resolution of your monitor and then it will downsample the graphics to make it a little bit smoother. So you could do that. Now you can also do it the other way about if you want to increase performance. Now I'm going to link the low spec gamers video in the description because you know if you have a bad PC then he's going to give do a really good guide and show you how to like get Dark Souls to work. That way you can play the game without the graphics mods but play it with the gameplay mods. Now moving on as we're trying to get the uh, most out of the graphics in this game we're going to put the anti-aliasing to 4 so that's the highest amount and we're going to put the well when it comes to anti-aliasing type you can have it to whatever type you prefer uh, they both look a little bit different we're just going to leave on SMAA but if you don't like that you can try FXAA if you like uh, next we've got the ambient occlusion we're just going to put that to 3 high and then the SSAO scale to 1 which is oddly enough the, the highest for that then you know we've got the uh, the type of ambient occlusion that's used. Now these all look different. I'm going to put mine to uh, VSSAO2, 
but you can mess about with all these different types and then because they all look a little bit different so this is just down to personal preference some give like a slightly black bordery shadow around it you can change it to a different one if you don't like that look that is completely up to you now honestly i'm not sure in how the depth of field override thing works i've set it to 810 because that's the one that i like the most but just don't have it as 1080 but i suppose you could put it in the higher option if you want but it has to be 810 it can't be like a number you know above or below that then you've got a depth of field scaling it says so i've not touched that and then with the depth of field additional blur um i've got it set to just the normal one that way you know it's not too much blur but again you know you can change that to zero or one one or two or three or four i don't know why the fuck they had these particular numbers but you know um if you want the additional blur off you have to set it to o not zero next we're going to move on to the frame rate and basically, you know, you want to make sure the frame rate is unlocked. So set that to 1. Now, it does cause gameplay issues or whatever, but it's irrelevant. We want to be able to play the game in 60 FPS. So make sure you set that to 60. Don't set it to anything other than 60. And then the FPS threshold basically will turn off anti-aliasing if the FPS goes below a certain point to try and drag it back up again. You just set that to whatever your hardware can handle. So you might need to play about with it, but if, if you've got a 1070 like me, you don't need to. Now, the mod author himself said to just ignore the filtering section of this, so just don't bother with that, just leave it at zero. The HUD options, now when it comes to HUD options, I want to have the, the HUD small but not opaque. You can obviously have it whatever way you want, it should be fairly straightforward, but you enable HUD mod 1, then you can remove the weapon icons, I, I don't like to do that. Uh, you can scale the HUD down to 0 0.75%, but I like to have it opaque, so I've set them all to 1 instead of like, you know, half or whatever. So uh, that way the HUD looks really good and you'll see that in a second. Then we have, you know, the windows and mouse cursor options. This, is, this should be pretty self-explanatory. This is completely down to personal taste and totally up to you. If you're anything like me, then you want to make sure that it doesn't capture the cursor. That way you can click on and off the game at will, essentially. It's pretty handy if you're, like, streaming or whatever. Then, you know, you've got the, uh, the save game backup options. This is pretty self-explanatory. I don't use them. If you want to use them, you can. You know, enable backups. It just saves a backup every now and then. And you can set it to whatever. Then we come to the texture override options. Now, texture dumping doesn't matter. You can just keep that at zero unless you want to make your own textures. But otherwise, enable texture override, set that to one. Then you have the other options. Skip intro, you definitely want to have that. Then you obviously have the change screenshot directory and override in game language. You can just set that to whatever. But the rest of the options, I genuinely don't actually know what they do, but it seems for the scope of this video anyway, it genuinely doesn't matter. Now, once you're done setting with these options, you just want to make sure you go up to the top and click save, and then that is you. Congratulations, you've installed DS Fix. Now, let's see what it looks like. And as you can see, it looks a lot fucking better already, but we're not done yet. Oh no, we're not done yet. We're going to go even further beyond. So at this point, we're going to be installing some textures and that's going to make the game look even better. Now, as you can see, there's some in red and the one the one above the red but under DS Fix uh, is a compilation mod which has all of the textures in red all together. I think I might be missing a few, which is why I suggest downloading all the ones in red individually. But if you want to save some time, you can just do what I do and download the exact file that I'm going for. Now, I noticed that one of the files was significantly larger than the other, well, the others, so I downloaded that instead just because I assumed that that might have uh, the best quality or the most textures in it, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. You can download pretty much any of these. And um, again, like I said, I recommend downloading all the ones in red instead. That way you can pick and choose exactly what is going into your game. But we're going to be downloading more than just the ones in red. So we're going to be downloading these ones as well. Uh, the one starting with the UI mod and ending with the uh, Cat Arena armor mod. So, once we've downloaded them and they'll be in our downloads folder, we can then go ahead and extract them all. So, I've opened up all the tabs. Now, another thing as well is that compilation mod you'll notice has both a Blight Town and Sense Fortress retexture in it. But there's a Blight Town and Sense Fortress retexture that I think is better. So, we're going to download them as well and we have to basically apply them in a certain order. You want to apply the ones that you want uh, after the initial ones, that way they will overwrite them, as you'll soon come to see. So we're going to be extracting all these mods, again, in the Dark Souls mod folder that I made. You can, again, you don't need to do this, but I just think it's, um, it's neat and tidy, and it's obviously much easier to follow, I would assume. So 
once we've extracted them, we can then put them into a DS fix. Now, it should be super easy to follow, honestly. It really is an incredibly simple process. Actually, surprisingly simple, I find. So, now they're all extracted, we can then, oh, just get DS fix up again. And again, by doing that, you want to go to, um, well, I'm just going to open up in Steam here, as you can see. So, again, go to Properties, and then you go to Browse Local Files, or, uh, yeah, Local Files and Browse Local Files, Data, DS fix. And then you open up text override, not text dump. So in this folder here is what you want to uh, essentially copy and paste the textures. I'm going to copy and paste them, that way I have backups. Um, because if you click and drag, it just moves them. And then, you know, you, you might have missed a thing or, or, what I pre or prefer one and just want to, you know, swap them over or whatever. So there you go. Copied them in and then that is pretty much all the environment texture mods. I'm going to put in the, this, uh, the, the aura reduction mod. Um, just makes things look a little if you like the order or not, you know, it's just part of the again All, all this comes down to personal taste, but I, I'm just giving you like a, a guideline for how to get My game out of it essentially now I'm not putting in dark HUD or the ju or anything from the DualShock folder because again the one of the UI mods has that in it anyway um, FO mod I have no idea what the fuck that does so ignore it um, Then we are coming to HUD uh, again, this is not the HUD mod that we're going to be using, so don't bother with anything in this file. I, well, I mean, you can if you like the way it looks, but personally, I, I mean, I really like the one that I, I picked. It's very subtle. Then I'm missing out, you know, keyboard and screenshot. It doesn't matter. Then there's a Solaire retexture. You can use that if you want. This particular mod comes with a, a higher resolution. It's essentially like a font. I don't like the way the font looks. You can use it if you want. Um, you might want to download another higher resolution font mod. Uh, it's really, really easy to find. Again, you just type it into the Nexus. Um, I'm using the, the, the epic subtitles font. I think, I, well, not the font, the mod. I think that looks kind of cool. But um, yeah, now we're onto the armor and weapons mods. These ones are all super good, especially the shield retextures. They are fucking incredible. I highly recommend using everything in here, if I'm being completely honest. Um, and again, you can go on the Nexus and you can just browse through all the texture mods and it's literally just as simple as, as you saw, download them, you extract them into your mods folder or a place where you, they'll be and then you just copy and paste them into DSFX. Now, as you can see here, if you're putting in a mod that is using the same, basically, like the code for the same thing, so you saw that was like two hollowed faces, if you prefer the new one, you want to copy and replace, and then that will delete the old one, and then you'll get the, the it'll let you use the new texture, essentially. So basically now you just want to do this for all the rest of the mods, and that, you just copy and paste them all in the folders, into the texture override, and that is pretty much you. Now again, just to recap, what you want to do is you want to download the texture mods, you want to extract them into its own folder, and then you click and drag, or copy and paste the textures that you want and put them into texture override in the DS fix folder. And it really is just as simple as that. And again, this is what the game looks like now. This, it's so crisp. It's so sharp. It looks so amazing. And yet we can still get the game looking better. So now we're going to be downloading and installing Reshade. Now, what is Reshade? That is definitely outside the scope of this video. I personally don't particularly know what Reshade is in depth. I just know that it works, this specific mod works, and it looks fucking great. So that is why we're going to download this uh, reshade mod right here. And again, all the links to all these mods are in the description. So this one is reshade color sharp dark. A lot of all the reshade mods are work exactly the same, but there is a slight caveat that if you want to change them, you want to make sure you know exactly what it is you need to delete out of the folder in order to remove it. So just like all the other mods, I want you to extract the folder, into Dark Souls mod folder in its own folder that way you know where all the specific files are going to be. Next I now want you to basically open up your data folder again so let's go to properties, uh, browse local files, local files and then there's your data folder there the one that has DS fix and your Dark Souls executable in it. Now you're just going to go to your color sharp dark folder and just copy and drag basically the files into it. Now, one thing that I do want to just point out is there is a, a file that says DS fix and it has some textures in it. These particular textures, I do recommend putting these into your texture override folder because as it turns out, um, basically the textures in this is essentially the exact same UI textures, just ever so slightly a little bit better. 
So next I want you to copy and paste the other four files into your data folder. Now I recommend copy and pasting because if you ever want to remove this reshade texture you then have a backup of the files to be able to cross reference and see what ones it is you need to remove in order to get rid of the reshade and then subsequently install a new one if you want. And as you can see this is what we're left with. So now I really like the letterboxing. Reshade has a function that lets you edit it in game. Uh, as you when you um, fire up the game the controls come up at the top so you can see how to open up the controller panel for it but personally i fucking love the way this looks but we're still not done yet we still have gameplay mods to install and that's what we're going to do next and it's honestly it's a, probably like the easiest thing to do out of the lot of this so now uh, to install the gameplay mods we need to definitely install the drag and drop mutton manager again the gameplay mods are all there we've got um prepare to die and rekindled We've got the gesture cancelling mod, which I'm amazed that this even exists. And then we also have the um, the rekindled mod itself. But, I mean, again, we want to be installing both rekindled and prepare to die again. Which, luckily enough, you can do both. So, we need to uh, download the drag and drop mod manager. Uh, now, for rekindled plus prepare to die, you need to download this one main file. And then you also need to scroll down to the bottom and download the uh, condensed file which combines them both. So remember to do that because there's a little bit of a trick to uh, installing these mods essentially. And with gesture cancel, um, you just download this and put in whatever one you want as you'll see in a second. Now with the rekindle mod, it's actually like super easy to install by itself. But honestly, I really don't see why you'd ever want to play rekindled and not play also prepare to die again. It really doesn't make any sense to me being completely honest. So now we've got my downloads file, I have uh, condensed all the graphic mods into this one folder just so I can keep them out of the way. But again, like the other times, we're just going to extract these other mod files from our downloads into our Dark Souls folder, just like you can see me do here. And then, once you're done with that, you want to go ahead and open up the drag and drop mod manager. So it does a little first time install thing, but nothing installs really. You want to just browse to your data folder, but it seems to do it automatically for me. And then you want to uh, click on your Dark Souls executable and then click open and then OK. And then that's you now it's like primed. So if you ever want to play with mods, you need to launch it from the drag and drop mod manager. But now when installing rekindled plus, plus prepare to die, you open up the main rekindled folder and only click and drag these. Do not click and drag the param folder at the top. You then, as you can see what I'm doing, find the combined folder and drag the param file in from that and then drag in these other two files as well. Do not use the param file from the main prepare to die again mod. Don't do that. So next we then want to install any either of these from the um, the gesture cancel mod and that is that's, liter that's literally it. That is how you install these gameplay mods. It's that simple. But again, like I said, you have to launch the game from the drag and drop mod manager if you want to play it with mods. Oddly enough, you can just switch in between. You can play the game with mods one time and then just not play it with mods the other and nothing seems to happen realistically. So to see if your mods are working, start a new game and if all the classes are level one, and are all different, such as the um, the warrior now has the broadsword and the knight has the longsword, so it's clearly the best option. I really don't know why I've done that, but if you want to see if prepare to die again is working, just go to Firelink Shrine. I mean, it should be pretty obvious, really, no matter where you are in the game, but specifically, if you go to Firelink Shrine, we've got this little guy here on the steps. He isn't there in vanilla Dark Souls. And just like that, you're pretty much playing Dark Souls Remastered. Now, isn't that pretty fucking cool? So, that pretty much brings it to the end of the video. Now there's a couple of little things that I want to get to, just as a little extra thing. You can save mod setups in the drag and drop mod manager. So once you've dragged all the mods in to get them to work, you basically save the setup in whatever folder you need it to be. And then when you want to play Dark Souls again, just open up the mod, the mod manager, and then open up the file that you've made, and then that will have all the files there so you don't need to keep, you know, dragging and dropping the files over and over again in order to play the game if you turn the computer off. It's pretty much as simple as that and it's a useful thing. And again, you know, if you want to play the mods, you need to launch it from the drag and drop mod manager or it will not work. And then just do it basically like I just done it there. That's how it works. Now, the next thing I want to say is if you're using the DS4 tool for Windows, if it's not working with Dark Souls 1, 
I, I would recommend, right, what you do is you restart your computer and then you make sure that you, the first thing you open up is DS4 tool. Now, sometimes you'll get a little error message saying that you have to close down Skype or like Steam or whatever before it will start to work. Because again, you need to go into settings and then use the hide DS4 thing. I don't know why that's a thing, but basically the way to fix this sometimes is you need to remove the actual physical cable from the computer, not remove the cable from the controller. So once you've removed it from the computer, and then close Steam and close Dark Souls, then you put the cable back into the computer, then it should work. I don't know why that's a discrepancy for getting it to work, but it just is. So, just in case this has been a thing for you guys, it's just there. Uh, because the last the last part of playing Dark Souls on PC is using a controller, right? So just as a final thing for everybody if you're using DS4 tool. And that definitely brings us to the end of the video. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this, or at the very least, I hope that you will use this video in order to be able to enjoy Dark Souls 1 on PC. I highly, highly recommend that you go and buy it right now. That way you can play this Dark Souls 1 the best it can be before the remaster comes out, and that way we can all be really jaded when the remaster actually comes out. And again, another massive thank you to everybody that was just shown on screen, and I guess to everybody that's... Uh, you know, new that's came to the channel over the past little while, views have been up recently, so that's been pretty good. So hopefully you guys will be enjoying all my content that's coming up. So anyway, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye.